What's up, guys? Uh, I sh we're going to shoot a video today. I don't know if it'll be a very long video, but it's something a little different. Um, my best friend, I mean, me and this guy, I mean, we're like brothers. Uh, we've been friends since, I don't know, fifth grade, I think. And, uh, you know, we, we hang out almost every weekend. And uh, his wife and my wife, they've known each other. They have a little girl, we have a little boy, and we have a little girl on the way. So, you know, just he, he's just a good friend of mine. I just bought a really nice house. It's a two-story house, and uh, they got a really good deal on it. But, you know, they are on a budget. Uh, you know, he's a police officer. And, uh, unfortunately, our law enforcement, uh, you know, they don't, they don't get paid uh, nearly enough for the service that they provide. Uh, same goes for our military. Um, he's got two train systems on the house. Uh, the air handlers are from 2005. They're identical. They were put in at the same time. Some TWEs, two and a half ton. Two and a half tons upstairs, two and a half tons downstairs. Um, and then he has a 2007 train XR 13 R22 condenser that serves the downstairs which it's working fine I serviced it out for him we also had to move it over you can't really call it a relocation we just literally moved it because he's got two condensers and they were sitting like literally this close together so we moved the XR 13 over then he has a uh, train from 2001. It's not an XB. It's you'll see it when we get there. Uh, and it's dead. The compressor's dead in it. So the, uh, they have no cooling upstairs. And like I said, he's on a budget. So if you, uh, I didn't do a vi I didn't do a video, but uh, I posted some pictures on Facebook and on. Google Plus, I believe, and uh, if you follow me on Twitter, I posted them on Twitter, of uh, two three-ton heat pump temp stars that we did. Well, we took out two two-and-a-halves. He was a little shy. Uh, we went from five tons to six tons of air, and it just so happens that's what my buddy's got. He's got two-and-a-half upstairs, two-and-a-half downstairs, so I'm taking one of those two-and-a-halves that I took out of that house because the condensers are still good, but the evaporators were leaking. Plus, they were, like I said, they were a little, they're about a ton shy on air. And uh, they, they're heat pumps, and my buddy, uh, he's got electric air handlers, but he doesn't have heat pumps. He's got straight cool condensers, which is, you know, there's a lot of that around here because a lot of guys around here don't like uh, heat pumps. But I don't have enough wire uh, outside to uh, convert this one over to a heat pump. So what I'm gonna do is, is I'm, I'm just gonna wire uh, the unit for straight cool. Uh, and being that this is, the, the unit we're gonna be putting in is a Rude, and like I said, it's used. I should, it should be really easy because the reversing valve energizes, energizes in the heating mode. So it'll be really easy to wire up. If it was a if it was a regular unit that energized in the cooling mode, basically what I would do is is I would twist red, orange, and yellow together, and then tie one of my condenser wires coming from the air handler to that, and then tie the other one to the common, and that would kick in the red, the uh, call for compressor, and the call for reversing valve, and that would make it run in cooling mode all the time. But being that this one is a rain. I shouldn't even have to do none of that. I should just be able to go directly to the contactor with my two low voltage wires coming from the air handler because the, the reverse of valve energizes in the heating mode. So this should be a very simple one to wire up. And that's how I'm gonna do it for him. So we'll, we'll take y'all along today. Like I said, this is something a little different. So uh, hopefully you enjoy the video. All right guys, well, there is another dead train. See, they're not unstoppable. It's a XB 1000. 
two and a half ton. There's the XR. You can see where I moved it and put it on a pad. They were both sitting on the concrete pad and they were almost touching. So we moved that one on a pad and we're going to install this. It's used but it's in good shape. Alright guys, we have our rood in place. Vacuum's pulling down. Yep, we're down. Down in the 600s already. That's a good sign. So we'll uh, let the vacuum pull down and we gotta hook up the high voltage and hook up the low voltage. Probably gonna go ahead and change this contactor out for him. And then I'm just gonna eliminate the defrost board. I'm gonna take the red wire coming from the field connection and go to one side of the contactor and then take the yellow wire from the field connection off the defrost board and go to the other side of the contactor. Cause Root and Ream energize in a heating mode and we're using this as a straight cool. So that'll kick the contactor in, automatically kick it into cooling mode. I'm going to take the condenser fan motor off of the defrost board, obviously, and hook it straight to the contactor because we do not need the defrost board to break the fan motor because this unit will not be defrosting because it will not run in the heat mode. So we're going to start wiring things up while the vacuum pulls down. Alright guys, you see we have the red and the yellow hooked up. Red's going here. Yellow is right here. Right there. That should pull the contactor in and that should put us in the cooling mode. Since Ream and Root energize in the heating mode, it should not affect anything. But we are fixing to find out. Alright. We got the smart tool hooked up. I had to put the, I had to put some uh, gas in it before starting it because the pressure was real low. We're gonna pop the disconnect in and see how she does. All right, guys. Well, she's running. I'm gonna give it a minute to stabilize. All right, well, let's uh, let it sit here for a minute and run and then we'll get back to y'all. Guys, things are starting to settle in. It's 90 degrees upstairs and that's what this unit is controlling upstairs. Tyler is on his way up there to get us a wet bulb reading. And uh, I know the superheat, it's gonna, it's gonna require a high superheat because it's, it's 90 degrees upstairs and it's like, it's pretty close. Today's been a cooler day in Louisiana than normal. And I know y'all are gonna laugh when I say this, but it's, it's probably about 98, 99 degrees because we've been hitting 105 almost every day. So we're going to require a high superheat. So I'm going to wait till he gets back with that reading before we add any more charge. All right, guys, the target superheat was 29. I knew it was going to be a target, uh, a high target. We're down to 26. I believe that's where I'm going to leave it. This one is performing much better. Seems to be cooling well because this one was doing a hundred pounds of suction and the superheat would stay in the high 30s, low 40s. It just wasn't pumping. And this, these pressures look a lot better than what that train looked. So we got him some cooling in a pinch. It's a used unit, but it's running good. Um, and that'll last them until they decide they want to upgrade the upstairs system because the uh, downstairs system is in very good shape. All right, guys, that'll do it for this one. Thanks for watching, and we'll see y'all on the next one.